Hi, and welcome to the live stream. We have five people today joining us for a full discussion on a lot of things that happened this week. Um, the special ones, Mark, welcome to the channel. Welcome to the show, man. It's been a long time actually having you. Um, Yellen, welcome. And of course, Ajax and Papimento, welcome, guys. Let me start with you, Mark. We have a bunch of things to talk about, but first and foremost, you know where I'm heading with this. A few weeks ago, you came to Amsterdam, you went to a game, and it wasn't exactly how you anticipated it would go, but what the only thing that stuck with me is that that shirt, that Kudus shirt and Kudus next to you. So would you like to explain to us how that happened? Yeah. Well, hey, first of all, great to be back on here. But um, yeah, it was crazy. I, I'd been planning the trip to Amsterdam for a while because I hadn't been able to see a game since COVID. So it had been a long time since I was able to go. So I had it planned for a long time. Hope was hoping that it would be like, you know, our title winning game or something like that. Didn't, didn't pan out. But um, I've been in loose communication with Kudus on social media for like a year and a half or so. Um, and so I just shot him a message and was like, Hey, I'm coming to Amsterdam. Would love to, you know, potentially say hi after the game or whatever it might be. And then I was in the stadium. The rules are very strict. I was in like the top tier and I wanted to go down to the lower tier so I could, you know, get a shirt or something like that after the game. The stewards were super mean <laughs> and didn't let me do that. And so then I shot him a message and I was like, Hey, I don't think it's going to happen. You know, I couldn't get down there, but happy to do whatever. And he was like, Hey man, like, I'll, I'm happy to like meet you across the street at the, at this hotel. So a, away I went and I went over there with my, with my two friends and he shows up in the lobby. I had like my head turned the other way and he was like, Hey Mark, you know? And I was like, Oh shit. Like, it's good. <laughs> you know, I was like, I was like, Hey man, like, how's it going? How's it going? And I kind of thought it'd be quick, you know, just like, hello. And that's it. And then he was like, do you want to sit and talk for a bit? And I was like, sure, let's do it. So then the, my three friends, and myself, we sat down, he gave me his shirt, we talked for like 20 minutes, just super, 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 super nice guy, um, entertained all of my stupid questions. And uh, yeah, and then he took a bunch of pictures with everybody, all the drunk people around who saw him in there afterwards. Really nice guy. And uh, yeah, awesome experience. And uh, yeah, that's, that's all I can say. It was great. Where, so where's that right now? Where's that shirt now? Yeah, exactly. Where's the shirt? Let's see. Should I, should I get it? I think I've got yeah, it. Sure, sure. Go ahead. Go ahead, man. Sure. Still yet to get it in a frame, but there you go. Please tell me he signed it. He did not. He did oh, not. man. But, Why? You know, I think he was thinking, because it was the one that he, you know, was, was wearing in the game. Um, Ooh. And he, you know... I bet he thought about it. There was probably a pen there. I didn't want to bother him anymore. It, it was good enough to get the picture and get it from him. So I didn't need any more favors from him. <laughs> Understood. Awesome, man. Awesome. Uh, glad to have you. Um, let me go with Jelen. Jelen, welcome. Thank you. Jelen, we've been... Uh, the season is over, basically. Um, not the best season we've had. But now, this week, a lot of things are happening. Um, would you like to start off maybe with... What we heard today about Heitinga, what's your opinion about the fact that he will not continue as a head coach next season? I mean, I can understand the decision uh, from uh, Mislin Dot to go with the more experienced coach. Uh, I saw the interview uh, with him uh, claiming that uh, John took it very professionally. And um, I also heard that there is no position for him in the technical staff of the first team. Um, because uh, Sven Mislanta, the technical director, thinks that a jump from the head coach to an assistant role is not possible. So my opinion is that uh, I think it's sad that uh, John will probably leave the club now and go somewhere else. So that's my first uh, first thought. I would have hoped to see some part in the coaching staff for him. So, uh, but I do think it's good that we go from with a more experienced coach in the short for the short term. I wouldn't have been terribly upset if he would have stayed so. as head coach you mean yeah really okay all right yeah. okay. I'll, I'll ask you about this in a bit um going to ijax ijax look when you come on the channel and we do the game talks and we do the live stream you know i always i always listen to what you say right i listen to everybody but when you talk i listen extra carefully you know so uh you said after the Twente game like look taking everything into account from the moment that Heitig has started until now. To be very honest with you, I think now it's almost 80% that we will not continue with him. 
Um, so basically, you're right. Um, after the news came in, your thoughts, and do you agree also with what Yellen said? Are you on the same page? Thanks for referring to that part also, uh, because I got bantered uh, hardly like like four or five weeks uh, by the guys. So thank you for that. Yeah, it was just pure logic, you know. Uh, if they would continue with him, no harm in, in announcing it earlier. Could have even given a boost to the team and to the coach. So uh, it's no surprise for me that he's going. Sad to see him go, because I think it's uh, a love uh, for the club that uh, made him jump in front of the group. And he had to salvage whatever he can uh, or could and uh, inherited a lot of bad things from Schroeder, also the way the squad was. So uh, nothing but good words for Johnny, but I think it's a sensible decision. Um, come again with the question, please, because I lost it. <laughs> no, no, I'm just, no, you're, you're expressing how you feel about it. But yeah. Also, do yeah. you agree with Yellen? Would you would have been okay if it was not like he will not continue as head coach, but no. it was the other way around? It, it, it's, it's now time for to state my mind because uh, during the season, I always said, uh, let's wait to the end of the season to fully judge him. And I must say, uh, up until now, I agree with all the decisions that Michelin Tat has made up until now. Uh, I understand also his philosophy that he would not um, yeah, get him back to an assistant role because that's quite weird if he just was the head coach. So I understand that part. I was hoping maybe that they find something in the ranks of the youth academy or stuff that he can just be building up, still working towards that manager role. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just, um, I, I must be honest, I think it's best for him to go. Although it's uh, with a sad heart uh, to see him leave because nothing but good words for Johnny. And he, the, the, just remember everybody, he at first said no to the job, you know. Then they asked him, please do it. And he, he did it for the love of the club. So um, let's not beat too hard on him. Uh, but it's better for the rebuild that we are facing to have an experienced coach or somebody with a little bit more baggage or whatever you want to call it. Mark, do you feel like we sacrificed Haitika this season? Like literally that word, sacrificed Haitika, taking into account what Ajax is saying. How do you feel about, you know, like you know what happened the whole season with Schroeder first, then he came in, etc. Would I mean, was it a lost cause from the start? Or do you think if he would have managed better, Maybe they would have stayed with him as a coach. No, I mean it was it was a tough situation to come into. I, I don't blame him at all for anything that happened. I mean, I think he did basically as best he as he could. I, I think there was obviously some things he could have done better, but you know, very little experience um, as an assistant coach, let alone a head coach. I mean, it, it's it's such a difficult situation to come into. Um, but hey, he was close. Like he did a good job. I think like that game against Feyenoord goes differently. Um, you know, we have a chance at the end of the game. Fantastic save. We end up winning that game 3-2. And all of a sudden, like, we're in the title race again. Like, things could have been different. You know, every, every, it, that's the way it is in football. Like, so it fine, fine margins. Um, but I feel for him, too, because I think he would have been somebody, you know, a little bit potentially set up to eventually become the coach at Ajax. You know, had he just stayed through the ranks, he probably would have been promoted from, you know, the young Ajax coach to assistant coach with just a new coach coming in, I think that probably would have happened. Um, but now as a result, I agree, it's tough to just bring him down from head coach to assistant coach. Like the power dynamic is a little bit off. Um, so it, it's a tough situation, but hopefully he he rebounds from this and he finds himself like a nice job elsewhere. Um, Cause I think he showed some signs of being a good coach. All the players clearly respected him. You saw that in a lot of, you saw that in a lot of the interviews. So hopefully he finds his way back up. Um, you know, I can't feel too bad for him. It is what it is when you get into like a management profession. So we'll see how he does. But obviously, I, I agree with everybody. Like, thankful for what he did. I think he picked up just a terrible situation and, and did about as well as he could have. Yeah, absolutely. Puppy, a question, right? Today, there was an interview, of course. Uh, there was a press moment. Also, Mislintot got a lot of questions from the, from the press, from the media. And they asked him, like, you know, what's the situation? Why did Heidi Khanna continue? Will he become an assistant? Yes or no? And he said some interesting things. You know, he said, like, uh, no, we're unlikely that he will be an assistant because we want a new coach to come in and it's better if he installs or he picks his own staff. Uh, but also, it doesn't work in a high-performance environment, he said, you know, to have somebody already as an assistant and then you get another coach to work with him, you know, you need to give the coach freedom. But then he said, um, we are looking if we can get another role or, you know, keep him involved at Ajax. But Realistically, we know that Heidegger has ambitions as a coach. So if he doesn't stick around, 
do we have anything we can give him at Ajax or make it, does it make more sense for him to go somewhere else, maybe coach an Eredivisie team? How do you feel about that? Yeah, I mean, Juan, I, I already told you, I, I thought, you know, him as being the manager for Ajax this season, I thought it was coming too soon for him. I think he lacks experience. And um, I, you, you, as a beginning coach, you should never be handed the reins over an Ajax team um, like that. So for me, it's good that he might go. He has now on his resume, he was head coach of Ajax. Um, so this might give him more opportunities for other clubs. But I do think he needs to coach other clubs to get to the level that he might someday become the coach of Ajax. But he's not ready yet at this moment. Um, as Mark said, very bad situation he, he came into. Um, no transfer window for him. He didn't pick his own players. He, he introduced youth players to the team. So he did a lot of things good, but the results in big games over the whole course of the season was was bad. And um, that's something Sven really judged them on, as uh, said in the interview, right? And about Sven, yeah, I think Ajax said that everything he's done up till now, he's bringing some calmness to the club, good decisions, uh, the signing of Branco, amazing. Um, now with, um, with the coach, he's making sensible decisions, I think. A lot of the fans were like, yeah, I think it's out of his depth. And um, I'm happy Sven also saw that like that. And he acknowledges that we need an experienced coach uh, in front of this team. If I may touch upon it briefly, also what I really, really like about Sven, um, since the first interview he gave on IXTV when he got appointed, he uh, comes over to me as a, a sensible uh, person and, and, and like very balanced. And today, again, when he uh, explained the situation about Heitinga, because on, on Ajax TV, on the, on the channel, you saw a video of him talking like for four or five minutes about the decision. Um, it it, it calm, just makes huh? sense. He's calm. He's composed. He's everything that Van der Sar, and I know it's a different position, wasn't in interviews. And that's something I like. Although, if you see him on the television with his cup of coffee... Um, all the way down, you know, in the in, in, in the stands, you think, hmm, what's wrong with this guy? Why is he like sitting like that? But everything else he's doing, <laughs> decisions he's making, the way he presents himself in front of the camera, I like it up until now. And that's the only thing we can judge him on up until now at our club. And what I see is what I like a lot, to be honest. Yeah, absolutely. Um, look, I, I'm also going over the comments from our viewers. Thank you for that. If you guys have questions as well, for any of the panels, let us know. Send them over. I will ask them as well. Um, Jelen, I want to ask you something. Uh, looking back, right, because we're talking a lot about Heidegger and we touched upon Sven. But in general, if we look at the at the team and the squad, uh, looking back now, um, was it really, you know, if you have to pick something that didn't work out, uh, could Heidegger has, have done better with this squad? Is this squad that unbalanced, that not clicking with each other? that any coach you put there previous season, whether mm -hmm. it's in the middle of the season or the start of the season, the outcome would have been more or less the same. Maybe a couple of points more, these kind of things. But in general, this is the only squeeze we could get out of the squad. What's your opinion? Um, good question. Uh, I do think that um, given the way that Ajax uh, is playing, so their playing style, this was the maximum that could be uh, drawn from this squad. He made a couple of big decisions to to bench a 20 million um, a plus signing in Bessie and getting Alvarez to the back line. And so he made he made some changes, with, which I think was for the better. However, this squad was, uh, I wouldn't necessarily say unbalanced, but really out of form. And they didn't believe in their own abilities this season. And I think that is the blame of Schroeder at the beginning of the season. There were so many frictions and so many uh, insecurities and they didn't know what to do within the system that they've been playing for years. So I don't know what wrong what went wrong there. The only coach or trainer I would say would have made a difference in us in the small run is maybe Evan Gaal for a six month period. And then he would have uh, played a similar system to the Netherlands, uh, the national team, like a more defensive system. And we've seen him do it with far mediocre squads and getting third and, and second place or fourth place um, at the World Championship. So maybe that would have landed us a couple of more points, but then we would have sacrificed our playing style and our 
basically our dignity. Um, yeah. So that is the only scenario in which I would have seen them clinching second or a couple of more points. Yeah, Mark, I want to go with you. Yeah, I want to go with you as well on what Yellen is saying, right? I mean, you've you've not been on the channel for I think a year, so almost a year. So at the start of the season, I don't know about you, but at the start of the season when we just started the transfer window was just closed. I was rather positive, to be honest. I'm not going to lie. You know, now we can look back and say, well, this and that. But at the start, I was like, this is a pretty, I mean, we have decent players, you know. I mean, name-wise, et cetera, et cetera. So I was a bit, a bit shocked after a few months how things went. And I was even more shocked when I read this week your tweet saying that Edson Alvarez has been outstanding this season. Okay, I'm, I'm maybe exaggerating a little bit, but you know what I mean. Because coming from you... Everybody knows you're you're somebody who likes technical players. You know these kind of players. You you always talk highly about those type of players. So Alvarez being complimented in your tweet is something I never imagined I could see. So does this maybe exemplify basically the season we had? If are you are you eyeing his shirt next, uh, Mark? Is that what you're doing? <laughs> like like you no? Know? <laughs> There's gonna be blood on it, so. <laughs> exactly yeah it's, it's all it's all it's all just a ploy for me i just i just tweet who i want to meet um but yeah it was it was a weird, weird season weird season weird season and i know that um i think as a result i think that's why alvarez you know really shone through a lot this season because you know we had to do a lot of defending when i don't think we were fully expecting to have to do so and a lot of our technical players let us down i think in multiple points during the season so as a result you know the person who kind of shines brightest there is the person who does the basics very very well which is what alvarez does defends very very well um and is very committed because i think at a lot of points during the season i think quite naturally but a lot of the players you could just tell dropped their own levels of intensity and sort of checked out a little bit. I think you saw that at points with like Bergvine during the season, you know, when he started getting benched and things like that, like the intensity wasn't there. Luckily from Alvarez, that's never in doubt. And I think that that is something that shouldn't go, you know, under the radar. I think it's, I think it's incredibly important. And you, and I think we saw that in particular with Lissandro Martinez leaving, like his general intensity and the way that he plays was so valuable. And it really had a, you know, sort of a, a, a radiating influence on Timber, I think, which was a big reason that he struggled this season. Um, so yeah, nothing nothing but positive things to say about Alvarez this season. Again, I think we can improve upon him, um, but it'll be tough because I think he's grown a lot. He's gotten more confident. He's gotten better on the ball. You know, he had that pass just a couple weeks ago, the second to last game of the season, um, that little chipped pass over to Kudus when he missed the 1v1. But like, those are some passes in his locker that he just didn't have at the, at the beginning when he came. So it's a testament to everything that he's done. Um, and yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be tough to, to, to replace him, but I kind of like in a way that talking about the unbalanced squad that Yellen was mentioning before and you know where the pieces kind of fit in and things like that. I don't mind that Alvarez and even though I love him to death, that Kudus is probably going to leave, I think as well. I think we kind of need a little bit of like a hard reset. Let's figure out what the new coach wants. Let's figure out what the new sporting director wants. Because right now, we have good pieces. I, I think we do have good talent generally. But it's tough to know like where they all fit in. It's like, are we playing Tadic through the middle? Are we playing Tadic through the left? Are we playing Bergvine through the left? Are we playing him through the middle? Do we play Wrench on the right? Do we play him as part of a center back? Do we play Timber as like a inverted fullback, like a Ben White or something like that? Or do we play him as a center back? Like, I just think there's so many moving pieces right now same with bassy left back center back so many different things that i think it's good to get rid of a couple players have a new coach come in have him imprint his style with miss lintot as well and we kind of go from there yeah absolutely you're touching upon basically what we're seeing today our topic is fresh start so talking about fresh start we have a question from uh mass place 42 will bronco von den Bromo, so that's our first signing basically uh we heard about it over the weekend a couple of days ago Will he be a good player for Ajax? So, Mark, let me ask you this question, and I will make a round so everybody has to say. It's tough to say, I think. Um, I've only seen him play once against PSG. I will be totally honest there. Don't remember him from his time at Young Ajax in 2013. Is, I can that, tell you that. is that where he made the free kick against PSG? Or yeah, he did. He did. He did. He scored. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He did score. And since I've watched, you know, four or five different YouTube videos and things like that. So not claiming to be the authority on him at all, but based on what I've seen, 
it seems like he will tick off a couple of important boxes for us, I think. One being set piece taking and long shot ability. I think it goes a little bit underrated in terms of how important that is. We've become so consistent in the way that we have to score goals. We need more versatility in the way that we score goals. We never get easy goals anymore unless Alvarez once every 250 Tadic corner kicks scores every so often. But we need to score from more set pieces. We need to score more long range goals. Think about how many times Shona, Ziak, you know, whoever it might have been from like the last four years, we, we could score from long range and we could score from set pieces, whether it was like Delict or whoever it might have been on these set pieces. So having a good set piece taker to me is a huge plus. I also think he seemingly is a very good leader. I think he can replace some of the characteristics that Claussen brings and that we seem to like from Claussen. You know, just that leadership, like that toughness, that durability that hopefully can phase Claussen out of the team a little bit because really that's all he's really bringing at this point is just like a little bit of like stability and you know what you're going to get. And then also I like his positional versatility. It seems like he can play as like part of a double pivot as like an eight or a little bit deeper as like, you know, one of the sixes in that double pivot or he could play a little bit more advanced also. So a little bit of versatility, and then obviously he's a free signing. So there's a lot of positives to it. It's hard to know how exactly he's going to fit in because we don't know how we're going to play. You know, I, like if, if we if we get a manager that wants really tidy, technical center mids, I don't know if he's perfect for that. But that depending quickly. on what it is, let's, let's see. Yeah, but ta talking, the final thing you said just there, a lot of people are questioning, why would you get a player before you get a coach? Or do they already know who the coach is? And there was a communication already about this. And that's why they signed Gronko. I would hope so. I would hope so. But you oh, never know. You're, you're I, hinting I towards Boss, right? <laughs> no, no, no. No, no, I'm not hinting towards anyone. I'm just make, I'm trying to make sense out of it. It would be weird if you sign a player, you already know you're not going to continue with Haidiha because people can also say maybe Haidiha said he was part of the process going into the summer. He said that in interviews. But Juan, you know? it, could also, it could also be that this is an opportunity that you will not get soon. This is a player that might not be your best player in the team, but he definitely has some skill set that will make your team better. Uh, he looked like a leader, actually, at Toulouse. If I look at the dressing room speeches he gives and, and things like that, he looks like uh, he has a decent head on his shoulders. Um, and his passing is actually phenomenal. Not only short passes, but his long-range passes, vision, uh, mo you know, passing forward constantly. He's really looking constantly for that pass. So... I'm not an expert on it. That's all from comps, but I'm just saying that he could be very useful for a midfield, an IX midfield. So yeah, um, but you're just honestly. Let's be honest. Let's 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 throw everything on the table now. You're just saying this because you agree with Mark. You want Klasa to be phased out of the team. Mm -hmm. Oh, definitely. But that doesn't have to do with Branco. <laughs> uh, but, but but it's a sensible it's a sensible decision if you ask me because uh, he has been at our club. He knows the identity of the club. And he um, did it the hard way, you know. I believe he went to the league, the um, league, the I believe uh, second league of yes. uh, of France. He became champions with uh, with Toulouse there. They now finished in 13th position. Uh, they won the cup, uh, if I'm correct. Um, uh, he had like eight uh, assist contributions in the league, five uh, uh, goals. That's not bad for a midfielder. And I saw uh, some compilations also on YouTube because it got me interested, you know. Um, yeah, he has a great pass. He has vision and uh, he can uh, do progressive passing. And that is something that we lack at the moment because with our defense in the current state that it is, we lack ball, um, comfortable ball players. If you play a Bessie, if you play a Sanchez, etc., it's not the same as we had last season with Mazraoui, with uh, uh, Martinez and with Tagliafico, for example, or Blind on that left back position. So you have to have strong midfielders that can carry the load if you do not have it in the back. Ideally, you have it on each position, but especially if you lack it in the defense, you have to have comfortable ball playing midfielders in, in, in the midfield. And he can do that. And let's not forget, a free transfer can work out very well for us. Remember a Lester Schoener when Ooh. he came from NSA? Everybody said, what, what is he going to do with Ajax? Yeah. And yeah, he's a legend now. So, so yeah. I never expect, honestly. I mean, the, I think the signing that surprised me the most ever is Schoener. I never expected him to be that important for Ajax. And, and, and even, also the, the comeback kid he was, you know, how many times as a fan did, did we write him off at the beginning of the season? Not Each only us. Every season. Not only us, also the coaches. The coach, yeah. didn't know, yeah. the coach didn't know what to do with them. Multiple coaches didn't know what to do with him. I mean, it was not until, I think it was Boss, 
I mean, because Schoener told him I can also play as a pivot, and he he actually gave him a shot, and then it started clicking that year. He even admitted about when Schoener went to the sixth role, that's where things started clicking uh, for Ajax. That's it's season. also a highly intelligent player, because if you look yeah. at his physique, the way he plays, he lacks the speed, he lacks the body. He's just so intelligent, the way that he moves the ball, who, how he positions himself, that he could be a decent pivot for us. Because yeah. if you look at all of his qualities and the way he's built separately, he doesn't have a lot of ingredients to be a great pivot, but he did it. And yeah. that says something about your football IQ, I believe. Uh, I, yeah, intelligence also. He's a very intelligent player. Um, I also wanted to say about Franco uh, that Branco. I've seen him giving passes Branco. in that... Not oh, Franco. Sorry. Sorry. Who's Franco, Franco man? Franco, Who's I'm Franco? sorry. <laughs> I also seen him giving passes, uh, Juan, that I haven't seen Taylor or Berghuis give the entire season. And and that that's why I think he, he could work at Ajax because he, he's that good giving those long balls. Uh, I've seen Kuru so many times trying to make a run, but he doesn't get the ball, for instance. He's the kind of guy probably, that can bring that ball. Probably, pro sorry, cheap shot. Probably because he's offside. Probably offside? <laughs> uh, <funny>. well, <laughs> I'm just joking here. I'm just uh, but joking. Se seriously, also, Juan, yeah. I don't know if you guys watched the introduction video on Ajax TV, but I liked what he said, you know. He said, okay, I did it the, the long way, went to the Keukenkampioen division, eventually went to the Ligue 2, uh, you know, and, and, and worked myself up. But now he's 27, he's in his prime, and he said that he, like, um, worked on all of his bad traits that he had, a lot. And he had he, to. He, yeah, he had to. And, and, and um, he improved in that area, and he said, my passing and... and uh, yeah, finding free players and progressing the play was always my strongest trait. But my weaker traits went up far, you know, compared to the past. He also just became a dad. He is more stable now at a certain age. So we might get a totally different player than somebody uh, of some of the fans may remember from the past because he's now 27. It's your peak, as a, especially as a, as a guy, you know, 27 is your prime year. Uh, body-wise, but also maybe uh, with his, uh, uh, you know, experience now. So I think he might be a very, very good signing for us. I just got this feeling. Yeah. And also, uh, we're forgetting his mental uh, hard hardness. Like, yeah. coming from Ligue 2, working your way up, working on other things. I, I think he has a certain level that he will not go under anymore with such a drive and mentality. So that's very good for this team as well, especially when we have so much young players around him. Yellen, I'm uh, I'm sorry, man. Yeah. You didn't even come in between. You know about Bronco, but not Franco. But Bronco. <laughs> Bronco. Uh, so quickly, the first, is there anything? Yeah. I'm sorry. Well, the first thing I am oh. wondering is why is he called Bronco? Because I feel like 1994, we're conceding oh, yeah. the free kick from Bronco, and he's born in 1995. So Brazil. his parents must have a good sense of humor. That's uh, that's for once. Uh, and I don't know. It's. Um, it's difficult. I think it's a coin toss because if he was really, um, let's say, I am glad that he worked on his game and that he's improved. Uh, and maybe that's good for Ajax that we don't have a, a youth star that is, shoots up to start and then burns out really quickly, as we've seen in the past with some players. Now we have a player uh, that's really built through resilience and through, through hard work. Um, but... He was recruited by Ajax and was sent away a year later, then went to Campion de Fizi, and he was very good in the second tier of France, but in the first tier, he was okay, but not too outstanding like he was in the second tier. So he has yet to prove himself on the highest level, because I believe that the Eredivisie is a higher competition than the uh, French second tier, um, in my opinion. So uh, it's a coin toss for me, but all the benefit of the doubt, and economically, it's a good signing. Yeah. Financial-wise, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, guys, uh, please send your questions. I'm, I'm watching. A lot of people are responding on a lot of topics. So I'm going to try to cluster them a little bit. Uh, we still have to touch upon uh, from the SAR, but we will do that in, in a bit. Um, let me go over coming back to Heidegger. So we know he's not going to be the coach, right? So now speculations have started. Who will be the next coach? Have you guys given it any thought? Do you guys have like a number one, maybe, if you, if you guys have to pick right now? Who would it be for you? Um, Yevon, take this away. Yeah, thank you for giving me the first answer. Because yeah, 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 I should. Arguably the, the most difficult question of the, of the whole <laughs> stream. So, but that's okay. Um, 
to touch upon what I said in the beginning of the live stream, I feel that there would have been a position for Heitinga as head coach with some mentor behind him. So we have seen this in the past with uh, Van Bronckhorst at Feyenoord or a similar, uh, well, Van Nistelrooy and Fred Rutte didn't work out too well, but it's a similar uh, similar thing. So I would have thought that that would be a possibility maybe with a Van Gaaro or something. So he could be like the face of the squad, but have a mentor to groom him into uh, the position and a manager uh, that he can be. So uh, he wouldn't have been sent away from the club and we would have had an excellent manager for years to come. But that is not happening as we know now. So if I would have had a favorite, it would be someone who know that, knows the Ajax culture. I know there's talk about the um, Norwegian trainer, Knutsen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, from uh, Bodo Glimt. Sorry if there are any Norwegian uh, viewers <laughs> if I butcher this. Um, but my um, my thing with that is that he doesn't uh, know the Ajax culture and it would take some time to get him up to speed. Perfect. Perfect that you're saying that because we have a question uh, about yeah. this. Maybe you can answer this as well. So um, mm -hmm. from Javi, thank you for this. Why in the Netherlands most of the people think that I should have a Dutch Ajax background coach, bold coach also, but okay, fine. <laughs> I just have any coach who is more than Keizer, Reiser, Heitka, but foreign. It is, it is a valid question. A lot of foreign people or fans from abroad do raise this question. Why do we always want, most of the time, we always give it to a Dutch coach? Yeah. What's your pay? And you're saying basically the same. I want somebody mm -hmm. who's familiar with the Ajax system. So the what do you say to yeah. that? Of course, yeah. The problem is that winning at Ajax is not enough. We need to do it in a certain style or fashion that is appealing to the fans and appealing to the to the crowd in the in the stadium and stuff like that. So to understand that way of playing and to always have the ball and to be good in possession, those are pretty generic things that a trainer can can learn. But the Ajax philosophy that how we play with the wingers and stuff like that that is something that is typical for Ajax. But if we hear Miss Linta talk about the culture at Ajax and how he views and how, what kind of trainer he is looking for, I think he understands what we need. So if that is really um, a profile that he can find elsewhere, uh, I'm also okay with that. But usually you find these things in people that are, have a background at Ajax. Okay. Uh, can I touch upon that, uh, Juan? Because I, I actually disagree a bit with um, what, what you're going to say. I understand where you're coming from. I understand the argumentation behind it. But if you look at the past, look at the Morton also, for example. Remember him? Uh, uh, Danish coach did quite well uh, uh, at Ajax. Uh, also a foreign coach. But not only this. Look at, for, for example, Erik ten Hag. He's a Dutch guy. Is he, was he a typical Ajax schooled guy? He knew about Ajax, of course, because he's from the Netherlands. He was coached at a different club at Utrecht. So maybe it's um, more, less of a transition if you go as a Dutch manager to a club like Ajax uh, to do the, to your thing there instead of a an, 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 an foreign manager. But also, it doesn't mean that if a foreign manager comes, also not from the club, he cannot adapt or, or, or do his thing quite well. So maybe we should just be a little bit more you know, open-minded and not only think about it has to be a Dutch manager, because I do not know this Norwegian guy at all, but I dove into him a little bit and just did a little bit of research. And what I heard and what I read was quite good, if I'm being honest. He may not be uh, proven outside of Nor Norway, but he came up from, I believe, the second league or maybe even a league lower. Worked Bodo Glimt up all the way to the Norwegian first league, became champions with them twice, 20. 2021 and two, two times in the last four years yeah two, and now already he's like um yeah at the first place again only one draw in nine games not only that i i heard he like butchered Mourinho with roma in the europa league they won six one against him and i've heard that he plays very attacking football he's very attacking minded mm -hmm. so all those things you know sound very good to me as 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 like a noob because i didn't see him play i didn't see his teams but it got, got me excited, you know, so why not approach him, you know, have a conversation with him. What are your ideas? Does it match a little bit with our DNA instead of always thinking it has to be a Dutch one? I'm not, Just I'm thinking not out loud here, the, yeah? yeah, I'm not dismissing the idea of, of this coach, not in the slightest. I'm just saying what the qualities of an Ajax coach should have. And if what I'm saying, if they can find that elsewhere, that's fine. 
And to touch upon what you said about Ten Hag, I really think that he learned his craft and the most of his craft when he was assistant to Guardiola. So I don't think that that is a comparison to uh, a, a coach from a Norwegian, uh, with all due respect, a second tier club uh, who worked their way up, which is very, uh, very good of a of a club to to build their way up. But it's no Pep Guardiola. So yeah, because yeah. I I had the same question because you know um, um, uh, Kabir. You know, who's on our channel uh, a lot of times. We talked with him on, on the chat and he was like, yeah, Norwegian guy. It cannot be good. You know, it's just a lower league than the VC. I have some friends in Norway and, and they told me the league is not that good. And I asked him the question, did you really ask your friends about Knutsen in particular? Because even in the VC that I call a shit league, we have some gems in the VC. Also coaches that are quite good. So then he asked his friends, what about Knutsen? And then they said... He's quite good. He did very well in Norway. He's played attractive football. So not not only the league, you know, there can be good things from there. Yeah, Ajax, just quickly, right? You've been saying a couple of times now on this channel that we have a shit league. Yeah. That's not the way to promote Ajax in the air division. <laughs> okay. It is true, though. Yeah, just, just leave it out a little bit. But yeah. Mark, you wanted to react. Go ahead, man. Yeah, I just want to say, like, I, I, I get the thought and I and I sort of understand where it comes from. But to me, it's always funny that a lot of that rhetoric around the manager, you know, should know Ajax, like they 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 should know the club. It's funny that wh why would we limit our options? You know, imagine if we had the same philosophy with players, right? Like, you know, we need to go out there and find Lissandro Martinez and Anthony and Davinson Sanchez and, you know, all these guys from around the world. Like there's so much talent out there now. And I think it's very easy, you know, using, um, you know, data analytics and seeing how, teams and managers and players are performing that we cannot you know limit our scope to just the netherlands because you know we're taking this pool you know i love the netherlands not the biggest country in the world you know you don't you don't have all you know it's not a guarantee that you know the next ten hog is going to be you know in the ajax setup that we already have you've got to go outside of it i think you have to be a, a little creative and i think luckily the structure of the club is so ingrained into everything that we do now you know, we've got the youth academy, there's always players coming. And for, to me, like, that's where the, you know, embodiment of the club comes from. It's making sure that we always have youth academy players. The day that we stop promoting youth and we're only signing players, that to me is like where it's, it, we've, we've lost touch of, of what we're trying to do. The manager who's in charge of it, as long as they're playing like good football, they're trying to keep the ball, it's trying to be, you know, fun and, and, and exciting to watch and they're winning games that I, I don't care as much about it's you know as long as we're getting some academy players through it's exciting and fun to watch use the scope um of, of the, the the talent pool that's out there of managers and, and do the best that we can do okay so i have two but questions you've touched upon two two things that i haven't hasn't happened this year sorry okay go ahead like go ahead. attractive football hasn't happened this year and more or less the promotion of good youth players maybe with the exception of hato in the last part of the the season other than yeah. that, we have not seen any good youth yeah. players. Come but but, to the but besides, and, and and it's funny because we didn't get we didn't get either of those two things with yeah. two coaches who you know True. would kind of fit that mold of you know knowing the exactly. club and, and things like exactly that. Exactly what you're saying, Mark. That's what I wanted to touch upon. If you dive a little bit deeper into the the last decades and 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 mention a few coaches that had the IX DNA, I'm talking about a Marco van Basten, a Jan Wouters, a Danny Blind. Uh, which, do, who do you have more? Kaiser coming up from uh, uh, the young Ajax squad. So already in the Ajax uh, household, you know. Uh, same same with some other managers that were there. Even Frank de Boer that did well as an Ajax product. Not everybody is as happy about him uh, as he was. I was um, uh -huh. uh, with, with the uh, material he had. But it isn't, a, a, an, isn't an ingredient for success if you're just coming from the Ajax, you know, academy. It isn't. I understand. Okay, so I wanted to react maybe to Mark, but also maybe to you guys. Uh, Mark, you can answer this, but I also want Papimento to uh, to give his opinion about this, what he thinks about this whole discussion. And maybe the viewers also can uh, react to this. So as you know, I have to be the devil's advocate. I have to come with some other arguments, which I will. I agree with you when you say like, why should we limit our scope, right? So I totally, totally understand that. There are two things that I'm questioning if you get like a foreign coach. First of all, is when you talk about the youth academy, the system or the game that he wants to play, it has to be as close as possible to the Ajax way because the, the youth is always playing a certain way because the end of the station, like coming to the station at the end, 
is the first team. That's always the intention. So you cannot have a coach come in from abroad and do something else because then young Ajax, from young Ajax to Ajax 1, will be completely different, you know, and that will make the transition harder in theory. The second thing I would say is communication. If you don't communicate, I mean, I know we have international players and these kind of things, and most of the times with international players we play, um, talk English, but the youth players and stuff like that, they're, most of them are Dutch. Most of them, you know, they want to communicate in Dutch. They want to understand in Dutch. They've been trained, most of them, also the Dutch way. So those will be the only two arguments like, how would that go? You know, if you have a head coach, how would the transition go from youth to that specific uh, IX1 team? Mark? Yeah. Yeah, so I'll be really quick, and then I'll, I'll turn it over. So I think yeah. for the, the youth academy stuff, I don't think it's that big of a deal, in my opinion, because I think from, you know, the U9s up until basically like the U18s, as long as you're playing some kind of attacking football, you're trying to be on the ball, et cetera, you're building the technique that you need to play at a high level like Ajax. And I think it's very easy then to implement the style that the main coach of Ajax is running with young Ajax. I don't think it's you're very saying, difficult to, to quickly yeah, get that going. The tactical, the tactical will come later. That's what you're saying. Yeah, I don't think it's too difficult. I think we saw that with Ten Hag. It happened really quickly. He was there for basically less than six months and young Ajax all of a sudden was playing exactly like the top team was. So I don't think it's too difficult to get that going really quickly. And then okay. secondly, on the, on the communication, all I, all I would point to there is look at Roberto De Zerbi at, at Brighton. He's giving his team talks in Italian with a translator and look how quickly they picked it up. You know, I, I just think it's, it's, an, it's a universal game these days. And, and right. look, every, I love going to the Netherlands because everybody speaks English. The airport signs yeah, exactly. in English. It's, it's Especially great. younger people have perfect English. My nephew yeah. of 14 years old speaks perfect English. So that's not non issue. All right. It's, not, it's um, not always like us, you know, like the old guys speaking a little mm -hmm. bit more English. Hey, but, speak but, for uh, yourself. Hey, Except, uh, uh, no, 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 you're not that old. Uh, so, no, but I'm talking about Mark my said, you know, the English language, everybody speaks it. So, what, where's the problem? And also, if you're like a highly valued youth product, you can be implemented in different styles. Quality always suffi suffices. It doesn't matter. Okay. Okay, Puppy, um, your view on uh, this whole topic on the next coach. Do you agree with Mark, Ajax, Yellen? I mean, I mean, I agree. I agree with Mark saying that we have we shouldn't limit our our um, our database for a new coach. Uh, I don't mind it being a foreign coach, to be honest, as long as he has the style of attacking football and how we like to play. Um, so if if Pep Guardiola wants to come, he's he's welcome. You know, I, I wouldn't <laughs> mind. You know, um, but on the other side, I know my first pick would be Boss, for instance, not because he's bald, not because he's Dutch. But just because I know what I have with Boss, I know that he will make players better. I know that we have a young team that needs a leader. I know that he can do that and develop those players and make them play even better than they're doing now. He can make it a team of it. Even with Ziyech, we, we showed it. He played them when we in the season that we got to the Europa League final and we got second. He switched Ziyech to actually a midfield role, right? And... He made him uh, work a lot on his uh, conditioning and physical aspect of the game. So I just know what I have with Boss. I, I know that in one season, he can do a lot of good things with this team. And I'm not familiar with Knudsen. I'm not familiar with you. you sorry. You uh, the yeah, exactly. The coach. Yeah. I'm, I'm not so familiar with them that it gives me like... I hear all these things, yeah, they're doing very good and etc. But I also hear they have different styles of managing. Um, uh, will that work with Ajax? You don't know. Um, is is the Norwegian league, is that the standard? Is that a high enough league to compare to a Dutch league, for instance? Is that sufficient experience? So for me, I know what I have with Boss. I don't know what I have with the other two, and that's why my pick is Boss. Yeah, but I think, I think also, uh, it was touched upon already, if you look at his, at his European results... He made quite an impression. Um, so it's not only Norway, which he did very well, but also in like the Roma uh, example, for instance. But yeah. also he did pretty well, you know, and on the European stage. So uh, I, yeah, I, it's still a risk, right? I mean, it's still a risk in general. I got uh, I got tagged on Twitter just before the live stream, and I'm, it's not on, on an official side or anything yet. But just want to touch upon it, like mm -hmm. boss, uh, like Pimento said. 
What's that? <laughs> Who's the door is that? So I thought my time, not my speaking time was up for today. But oh, who ordered pizza? Who ordered pizza? <laughs> no, but um, with boss, I got tagged. You know, uh, apparently his the uh, demands that he had um, for the position were too hefty. Uh, he asked for a totally um, to restructure the total structure of the bench. You know, all the assistants he wanted to choose himself, his whole staff. He asked for a certainty that he would have a, a transfer budget of a certain amount. And Sven and Susan, according to that message, uh, thought that was too much, and that's why they're moving on. So I if that's not, true, I don't believe that. Yeah, my, I just I I'm just putting it out there. I'm not saying it's the truth or it's on an official channel yet. But uh, according to that source, um, that's part looking, of the situation. Looking at what Sven said, that Heidenka will not be part as an assistant coach of the staff, etc. It could be that it would be boss with his entire staff. He would bring it. But about having um, a transfer sum already set up for you to spend, I don't think that Ajax works that way. Though. Apparently. Yeah. Look, uh, guys... Um, Two more things we have to touch upon, which I want to touch upon, but we have to go a bit quicker now. Uh, the first thing we have to touch upon is on Star. Um, yesterday we heard he stepped down, he resigned. Um, just a brief round, uh, everybody's reaction to that, uh, what do you guys feel about that. It means also now until the 1st of August, they're going to look for, some, for another CEO. There was a question from one of our viewers also. Um, so let's, okay, let's go with the... You know, like the discussion we had, we have Sven, foreign director of football. Maybe we appoint a foreign coach. So who should be the CEO in that case? But first, let us touch upon uh, from the start. And maybe if you guys have some idea who the CEO should be, let me know as well. Uh, Puppy, let me go with you first. Uh, look, from the 11 years when the star was with us, I think we had phenomenal seasons with him. I think... He did, you know, in the beginning, a lot of things well. Um, but so I am sad that we lost a legend like that in the way we did. Not a winning season, but everything went to shit. And that's the reason he left. So that, that hurts me. It's a legend. Uh, it shouldn't go this way. But I must also say that in the last two seasons, he really... Uh, did, made a lot of terrible decisions. I mean, um, and, and one of the arguments has always been communication has been bad uh, with coaches, players in, internally, people not knowing what to do, etc. I think that's, uh, you know, as a leader, that should be on you. Uh, the players that came in, his responsibility, uh, if sporting director is not your job or you ha don't have the experience, don't take that responsibility. Um, and, you know, with the whole Schroeder situation, he could have fired Schroeder before the whole uh, World Cup, given Haitika more time. Now, uh, we lost uh, a lot of Ajax legends um, because of a lot of terrible decisions. I mean, we lost Bocharde we, uh, because Schroeder was coming in. We, we lost Haitika because he was thrown uh, in front of a group that he had to manage. Um, so, yeah, in, in two seasons, he, he did a lot of damage just because he thought he could take over the role from Overmars. Um, and he it's his responsibility to assign a new sporting director, and he didn't. So that's all on him. Um, so thank you for the nine years. That was excellent. But the moment problems started to happen and our sporting director left, he couldn't write the ship anymore. And that's on him. And um, yeah, so logical, logical decision for him to leave as well. Okay, Jana, your your point of view on this one? Yeah, I agree. I think that um, once Overmars left, the one part of the tandem was was gone, and I feel like he was a little lost and um, try to overreach his uh, capabilities and his responsibilities. Uh, therefore, making um, how do you say it in Dutch? Is that uh, when you, when you are in the in the corner, you make weird decisions? I don't know the exact. Uh, uh, how you say <laughs> it, but, uh, yeah, when you, yeah, all right. Something, yeah. something with a cat, right? Yeah, when something a cat is in the, in the, in the corner, he makes weird jumps, and uh, <laughs> I've seen him on his bike, so nobody wants to see him jump. Uh, <laughs> but in all seriousness, uh, I think that um, he overstayed his. Um, I feel like that with uh, with with these kind of positions, there's always like a expiration date, and he was past his expiration date. So it would be good to have a fresh face there. 
part of the rebuild. Mark, I want to ask you the same about Fonsar, but I also want to ask you, you know, because again, we have the whole discussion today is about the fresh start. Is this fresh start what we need, really? Or is it too much change at once, what's happening right now? Because if you compare to two seasons ago, everything's changed. Like one season ago, everything has changed. Like our coach, our director of football, uh, the, uh, the board, uh, everything is changing in one year. Is this a good thing or is it maybe a little bit too fast what's happening right now? Well, first with, with Wundersar, I, I think when, look, you're probably doing your job as a CEO of a, of a, of a football club if no one ever hears from you. You know, we, we don't we don't want to hear about what you're doing. You shouldn't be involved in the football side of things. And I think he did a great job of that because evidently Overmars and Bosch and then Overmars and Ten Hag just had a really good structure in place from the footballing side of things. It seems like he's a little bit of a disaster, honestly, in terms of like organization in, in the in the club itself. And when he had to take on more of those roles, he was totally unable to do it huge ego, wasn't able to let it go. So it seems like he probably wasn't great this whole time, but we just didn't really know anything about it because Overmars and the coachings, the coaches that we had were able to overcome it entirely on the on the football side of things. So, you know, hey, he's a legend. Nothing, I guess, to criticize for seven years until Overmars left when, which that whole situation was handled terribly to begin with. Um, but hey, he's moved, he's moved on now. I think it was a good decision because clearly he showed he's relatively inept from a, from a footballing side of things. So let's move past it. And I think from a from a fresh start standpoint, it's a good time for him to go. Let's get clean house, get a whole new sporting director in, get a whole new coach in. Let's figure this thing out because that's kind of how football goes now these days. Things go in cycles. And unless you're Pep Guardiola, it's hard to, to keep things going um, consistently. I thought we were coming on a, a, a year, you know, maybe 10 years of dominance with Ten Hag and Tadic and everything seemed to be clicking perfectly. But it's not how it goes these days, right? Things can things can totally get upended really, really quickly. So um, I think it's fine. I think it happens at multiple clubs and clubs figure it out really quickly. Um, you saw it at Barcelona, they cleaned house and they brought in Laporta back and they got Xavi back in. And all of a sudden they've sort of figured things out again. Obviously they have a lot more money to play with than, than we do, although maybe not. Maybe, 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 but I think it's fine. I think it's okay. And I think it's a good time to, to do it. And um, I, I think the only inhibitor to the full rebuild is going to be some of the players that are still here. And I, I love Tadic to death. But We will touch upon that yeah. in a bit. That's my second point. We'll touch Please upon don't it. go there yeah. because Ajax yeah. will... Rip it. Yeah, I just want to... <laughs> rip you a new one. <laughs> yeah, for, for the ones that just... Ajax also give your opinion about the Von Sars thing. And also, um, when there was an interview with Erika, of course, the, the chairman. And he said, like, we wanted Von Sars to stay. So the impression that they gave us is that from the start made the decision to, to, to quit on his own. And they were sad about it. They wanted him actually to stay in this, in this current role. So what's your view on that? Let me quickly get that last one out of the way, because I think this is just how it goes in certain companies. And like uh, um, if you work somewhere, you have a certain track record, you're a legend, you have a certain reputation. And um, in front of the public, you say, yeah, we want to keep him on and to say that he's going. But you're just giving the person out, you know, to keep the honor to himself and just resign. This is what my feeling says. I do not have the argumentation because we will never know that unless you're in the ranks of Ajax. But this is just a typical thing that happens a lot of the times. And for me, it's the same situation if I'm being honest. But I do not know. I do not know for sure. Of course, nobody does. Uh, it, maybe Pierre Enga himself does, of course, but not we. Uh, about um, about Van der Sar. Let me be just quick on on the situation. He's a legend of our club. I love what he did as a football player. Um, you're just, you know, your team is as strong as your weakest link. And when Ten Hag and Overmars left due to different reasons, uh, his, you know, deficiencies surfaced. So he should have been strong enough to know what his weak points are and his strong points and just told the people in charge and, and himself also, I'm not going to do this kind of workload in this area like what Overmars did because it's not my cup of tea. If you decide to go for it or you just do it, it's the same with Heidinger now. He did it in love for the club, but he's also getting uh, the bill at the end of the season, you know? Same with Van der Sar. And it's the same with everybody that has a job. You're just as good as your last year, you know? So you can be sentimental, whatever you want. You know, he did good stuff in, in the past. Yes, he did. 
but he made huge mistakes in the last year. Some may be because of an ego situation. Some may be because he overestimated himself. I do not know. Some may be just unlucky because it's, it was havoc within the ranks. But you're the CEO. You're responsible. So I'm glad he's gone. That does not say anything about what my feelings, feelings are towards him as a player or what he did in combination with when the team was strong. Because I think he was in his strengths back then. And other uh, persons in the team, like an Overmars and, for example, an Ten Hag, could cover for the things that Van der Sar are not, is, is not his strength, you know? They took that away from him. And, and that made the team strong. So, for me, it's just, um, you know, being presented the bill at the end of the season. And, yeah, he made the decision on his own. But I have serious doubts with that, if it's true. Mm-hmm. You know, the only thing I would say, you know, uh, apart from everything, um, I totally agree. You know, I think I think he took the right decision. I think also the pressure, he was not going to win the battle anymore of the perception of fans and everybody that had uh, towards him. But one thing I would say, though, is it's a bit strange now because he's responsible for assigning Sven. Basically, he had a say about Van Halst being in the board, and now he's leaving. So, you know, I just hope that the people that come in are still the ones that can work with the people that they were appointed, that we don't get these, you know, like dynamics anymore. That maybe this doesn't click with that, or etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's the only thing I hope. Um, the last part of this video, and I also want the viewers um, to share their opinion about this, or maybe ask questions. The squad, right? I mean, Mark is here. Mark loves talking about players and the squad, and Yellen is here as well. So the fresh start. You mentioned already, Mark. Let me go with you first. You already t- touched upon it. You love kudos to death. Um, you know, you, I think you like Timber as well. Edson, you complimented this week. Um, you should pin that tweet, by the way, so people can find it right away. But you're saying basically that, you know, if they leave, maybe it's for the better. You know, it's so how do you envision us going into next season? What would you like to see? Coach, who knows what he's doing, first and foremost, because um, I, I just think everything else is irrelevant to that. I think we've really seen the impact of coaching making way more of a difference than I think it has in the past. And I think you're seeing that across Europe generally. Um, Coaches that can get the best out of their players is is most important. So hard to say beyond that. From a squad perspective, though, we have some tough decisions. And I don't fully know the answer. But I'll say that we've whoever comes in is going to have to figure out what to do with Tadic and Berghaus and Bergvein and Timber. And I think there's a, there's a four key players that I think are probably all going to stay. Timber is maybe the one question mark. We'll, we'll see what happens. But you've got four guys right there that are pretty experienced now. Timber obviously being like younger compared to those three. But none of them we've really been able to figure out in the past, you know, like six months to a year, what their best position is. And we need to, in theory, we're, in built, we're building around them. But no one really knows like where they should be playing. So at some point, we've got to figure out stop putting players outside of positions where they're most comfortable and figure it out because all of this moving around of Bergvine to the 10, to the left, to the striker, to the right, Tadic to the right, striker to the left, it's just getting too much. I think we've got to figure out, you know, what works best for our team and make some, make some important decisions. And then hopefully, in my opinion, in the transfer window, sign a lot of young, high upside potential players that can get us back to where we want to be. I think enough of, I was a proponent of it at the time. I think it was maybe incorrect, but guys like Bergvine, it's, it, it just isn't, I think, fully in the spirit of, of what Ajax should be of these, these big money signings for more established players, because you kind of raise the floor a little bit, but we know what their ceiling is. And we know that Bergvine is not a top 10 player in the world. I would rather try and sign the players that can get us there your Frankie de Jong's of the world, your Anthony's of the world, your Lissandra Martinez's of the world, wherever they may come from. I think we have to get back to that. And I think if we do that, we'll, you know, hopefully unearth some really quality players and then, you know, things fall in line from there. But it, it's, a hard, that, it's a hard question with the squad. Yeah, it's a tough, I guess a tough when you're question. referring to that, those type of players, everybody saw the Guller pass just, just yesterday, I think. So those kind of players, those gems, you know. But yeah, but we have to be on time, you know. That's the thing. I think now maybe... He's already too expensive for it, but we'll see. That's possible. But, then, la- la- but yeah, last point, and then I'll I'll shut up. No, no, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh man, oh. <laughs> um, it's 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 that that really is always what I try and drive home the point to be with Ajax is like, from a player perspective, 
we can only do as well as we think we can if we get on these guys early. We've got to get on them early and we've got to be creative. You've got to be Brighton like and do what we've done in the past. I mean, plucking Anthony from like a couple of appearances from Sao Paulo, Lissandra Martinez from like a, you know, a re relatively unknown Argent Argentine club. It's not exactly River or Boca where you came from. You got to be creative because there's, there's too many, there's too many smart teams out there now that get ahead of these things even before we do. And with the amount of money with Newcastle and, you know, all these teams that come into it, if we want to compete and get back there, you've got to be smart. You got to be proactive. And hopefully that's what Miss Lintot does. And, you know, then we'll see coach first and then try and get some high upside players, maybe start fading out, phasing out guys like Tadic and Klaas in a little bit um, and see what we can do over the next, you know, three to five years. Yeah. Thank you, man. Um, Yellow, before I go to you, uh, just quickly, you mentioned all of the ones in the generation players, but still. That's the, one, that's the ones you got to go for, man. You got to hope for them. Yeah. So uh, just a quick uh, hi to Sahbi for joining. Most important thing um, is to have a coach ASAP. Secondly, build a squad to start the preseason with a full squad. Let's go. All right. Uh, thanks, Sahbi. Uh, Yellen, your, your point of view, your reaction, uh, what do you think we should do? What would make you happy? Let me put it this way. On August 31st, what would make you happy? Yeah, I think a couple of good points uh, Mark is uh, saying about uh, the Ajax philosophy in the finding young players that can be uh, built up to even better players and let's say uh, the golden boy uh, rankings uh, like Matthijs Olyft and Frankie de Jong. Uh, so that's a good point, uh, preferably from our own youth squad, but uh, that hasn't been the case since those two players, uh, de Ligt and, uh, and de Jong. So I do believe I just was reading a, a message from Miss Lintot and he's saying that he's eyeing eight, no less than eight um, transfers. And of those eight, three have to be um, like carrying players, like uh, like first team players. Um, I think to uh, consider the leaving of uh, or the departure of um, Alvarez. And I do believe Kudos as well. Um, and Timber. I believe Timber as well. So um, with that said i do believe that we have to have adequate um adequate new players to fill in those positions uh which is going to be hard because we have been um beaten by other clubs with talents in the past year like i heard th talks about a brazilian talent who went to i think newcastle i'm not quite sure but i think premier league mm -hmm. i don't know for sure but we have been been more and more uh beaten by other clubs um talking yeah quickly talking about newcastle i was talking to copimento not so long ago about isaac who's playing now for mm. newcastle he was yeah. here a few years ago playing at Willem Bay, being loaned out from dortmund and he, he already honestly i'm not saying that in retrospect he already was pretty good playing at Willem Bay, and i was like hey i should really look at this guy but then he went to france uh, or no spain right Spain, Did yeah. He for, oh no, he went to Real. Sociedad. Yeah, 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 exactly. yeah. Sociedad, yeah, yeah. So yeah, and he was he was basically in our backyard, right? So yeah. yeah. But we were too late once he was getting into his groove in the in the Eredivisie. We were already too late because Sociedad already saw what we should have seen before he went to Willem II. So I believe that we should be earlier. Um, so, but that's really. I think we also lost a scout for South America, right? If I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Um, so I feel like uh, on that front, we're not doing too well. Um, I did see a, a message that we were eyeing to Swedish uh, signings, youngsters from Hecken, if I'm saying that correctly. So I don't know. They're looking into young talent outside of our youth squad and, and uh, with that philosophy in mind. But I do believe we need three or four good players to, to uh, hold us over for the for coming two years. So a, bit, a little bit of both. Is that an answer to your question? Yeah, but just, just on top of that, and also taking into account what Mark said, um, so we have those experienced players, right? So we should eyeing now the youngers, the young talents, the generational talents, basically, in the yeah. summer? Or should we add also, because we know that Alvarez, Timber, Kudus are leaving, should we add yeah. also experience? We should replace those players with, uh, let's say, a uh, Talia Fico type, who is not too young, but also not uh, a has-been. Uh, and it's relatively affordable, can have a career of like, say, two, three seasons and then maybe go on to something else or... Like a Branko van den Bomen? Yeah. 
In that case, yes, but I don't know if he's at the level of Taliafico. We only know. Oh when no, they... but as a uh, as a substitute for an Alvarez, as a somebody as a pivot in the midfield. I can imagine that he could be a player like that. Yes, definitely. Yeah. All right. Um, so we have Eduardo good, good, Andrade. Uh, add, add on, uh, <laughs> we have Eduardo Andrade for his suggestion. I think the opportunity to suggest some of the good young players from the Brazilian market eyes can look in this window. I think Andrade is from Brazil or Portuguese. I think he's Portuguese, but is he from Brazil? Let me know. Beraldo, Pablo Maia from Sao Paulo, Andre. Andre, I heard about. So Andre, uh, Andre, I've also, heard, a lot, also I've heard, heard a lot about. of a Tete or something from Brazil. No, we should, we, we should be getting the uh Redondo's son to play holding midfield. Yeah. He's 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 come about recently, seen a lot so of videos of him. Team, I mean, it's all now basically missing out stories coming out, you know. Like, but also, like, uh, like a like a could be really good. I, I, I think he's a really good player, actually. That fits for me, fits the mode of a, of a player we should be looking at. Maybe not at the level of Anthony, but certainly good enough to be growing into something better. Yeah. yeah, I mean, honestly, the Consorcio thing was sensible also from the perspective that we had a cost, five million, we can take him. Uh, the upside is huge, so it's worth the shot, right? This is something we should do more often. Like now, we need a coach to have who has the cojones to actually play him more because I no sense in the beginning of the season that he should play more. Yeah. So listen, guys. <laughs> um, John W is saying, "Puppy, so quiet in this chat." So, puppy, go ahead, man. What's your view? Yeah, uh, John, it's it's a big group, man. So sometimes you just have to <laughs> shut up and enjoy what you're listening to. But uh, yeah, uh, look, coming back, I think the most difficult things for us going forward is finding a replacement for Tadic because that is our captain, that has been our leader in that dressing room for a long time. I think uh, that phase in which we have to kind of let him play less and finding that new captain, I think that's going to be a very hard one. And I think for next season, I just want a balanced team. I want to see how Sven is going to replace all the grin that we lost uh, and the aerial ability, something we always lack in this team. Uh, Alvarez has it, also leaving. So I also want to see how Sven is going to set this up and how balanced he's going to make this team because that's going to be very important going forward. Yeah, talking about that, I, I I was watching, I think, two weeks ago a game from Ajax, and I think the commentator said that we've conceded, um, uh, we've conceded goals from crosses this season more than the last three years combined, something like that, which oh, was a crazy yeah. stat, by the way. But, yeah, anyways, um, Ajax, the floor is yours, man. So yeah. what makes you happy? So, Tell yeah, me. I have what to touch upon the, you know how I feel about the Tadic part. I have to touch upon it quickly. Go ahead. I, I, I know, I know he's no, 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 no. Seriously, I know he's in decline, and some of the viewers and followers are saying, "Yeah, you're not as harsh on Tadic as on other players or as on Van Zar and stuff." He has been the MVP of the Eredivisie since he has arrived. He's been the MVP of the Eredivisie again this season with his goal and assist contributions. He has the highest stats and creating chances in all competitions in Europe. I'm not blind to see that it is not clicking, but the whole team is not clicking. So for me, people saying that Tadic should be like uh, already benched or stuff, I just don't agree with it because there is so much fundamentally wrong. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. There's so much fundamentally wrong with this team in other positions that need strengthening and need other players in that I can guarantee you even a Tadic at this age with better players around him that can hold their own and do their stuff well, will still shine. And find um, me somebody else that is a youth product, because everybody's saying that, uh, and especially other, other people are saying that, you know, find the next new hot thing coming from Brazil or from Europe somewhere and implement them. Find me somebody that can bring Tadic his stats immediately as a youngster, and I will shut up about it. But for me, there are six or seven positions before we should consider dropping Tadic because even in the worst season of the last decade, he still produced immense stats. And yes, it wasn't beautiful, but the whole team wasn't beautiful. So let's give him some credit. Mark, wait, wait, you're, you're, I'm sorry. Wait, 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 just, wait, a wait, I, I just a minute. Just a minute. Just a minute. Mark, do you have five more minutes or because you're running a I, little bit? I, 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 I can give you four. Four minutes. Poppy, be quick, please. 
Yeah, no, about the Papi situation, I think you just don't need to be blind about it. Yeah, he is good. Yeah, he's not the Tadic he was. Yes, he is in decline. Uh, he's 35 years old. You don't want to be in a situation like uh, like uh, Liverpool that you have still a Henderson and a Milner walking around on the pitch <laughs> and because they are your captain. You also need to think about the future. You need to think about the next captain because that is going to happen, even though if you close your eyes to it. And yes, Tadic could be another season successful for us in the Eredivisie. But we also have to consider getting results in the Europa League or in the Champions League. And I don't think um, that he can be as useful there as he would be in the area division. Okay. And I don't. And I, and, 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 I don't and I don't think. I don't think. Let me. Add, this is my last question, but you can take it from there. It's the same, basically. I'm. I'm basically reacting to the Tadish situation. And again, it's more devil's advocate than my real opinion. But Ajax and Papimento were uh, were uh, earlier this week at the Liverpool stream. They were talking about Gravenberg, and Ajax said. Rightfully so, that last year, even in the interview, it came to light. His father said, father of Gravenberg, that Gravenberg was sacrificed a little bit on the zone, on the left zone position, because Blint was playing there, Tadic was playing there, and Ten Hag made him play very tactically. He wasn't supposed to get the ball. He didn't have a lot of ball touches, etc. Moving now to this situation this year, but also in the future, don't you guys feel that we have to really compose and maybe, um, you know, how do you call that? Like, Tadic has certain deficiencies and certain qualities, you know? It's, it's like extreme cases. And if you want to fit him in a team and you want to play against in Europe or something like that or against good opponents, you have to tactically start asking other players to do more or do less to make Tadic stand out. That's basically my question. Is that, is that something we should do for Tadic? It, does he give us a lot for us to do that? Or is it more like so. no? Actually, we shouldn't. We shouldn't, you know, build a team around one player. That's my so, question. Yes. So, so this will be my my last thing before I, I drop. Uh, sure. I don't think the, I don't think the thing like I I actually agree with with Ajax. I I think Tata shouldn't be blamed for most of the stuff that that's going on. He still performed really well, and I think you still see it in moments like the quality is immense, immense quality. I think my only thing with Tata is we need to be a little bit more forward looking at this point. We're not like a perfect team anymore. Like we're not competing for champions leagues and things like that. So like, you know, we have to have a little bit more of a forward looking mentality and approach here. So he shouldn't be starting 50 games a season. He, he's got to be starting 30 to 35 and you pick and choose the moments where you really need him to turn on because as much as he's one of the most in shape, you know, veteran players you'll see around he takes such good care of himself and i think he's capable clearly of playing all these games he doesn't get hurt things like that such a good professional and everything but you can tell i think that the games start to add up and he sometimes has these games he had probably 10 or 15 over the course of the season when he was particularly playing on the left where you're just like he doesn't have it he couldn't beat players 1v1 he was too slow probably a little bit tired he's still so good and we have to maximize him as much as we, we can. And to do that, we just have to protect him a little bit. We've got to figure out ways that we can win without him in the team, because otherwise we're, we're just going to run him into the ground, I think. And it overall, over the course of a season, it lowers our level just because he's not on it a hundred percent of the time, but we still play him like he is. So that's like the only thing for me is we, we just got to start tapering down his minutes a little bit so we can keep him for as long as we can playing at a high level. That, that's yeah. what I think. And, and we should stop playing him as a striker, a right winger, or as a 10. He plays left wing. It's his best position. And if Bergwijn, who, who costs 30 million, cannot do better than he, then he doesn't deserve to play. Simple as that. Stop playing him on other positions. All right. Mark, thank you, man. I know you have to go. Uh, thank Thanks, you Mark. so much. On behalf of everyone, we'll see you. Thank you, Mark. See you. Man. Pleasure as always, guys. See you. Bye. Bye, Mark. See you, Mark. Bye-bye. All right, um, guys, just finally, Yellen, uh, you didn't have really a lot to say at the end, but just your opinion on the Tadic discussion, and that, that will be it for today. So tell yeah, me. Yeah, sure. Um, it's hard to disagree with the numbers he's putting up. So that's uh, that's an easy, um, also an easy reason to keep him in the squad, because I do believe that um, the level that we have in the Netherlands is not like a good statistical measurement for um, other competitions in Europe where you're comparing him to. 
So let's say he does this in the in the, in the Spanish first league or in the Premier League or whatever, he wouldn't be able to do that. So that's a I think it's a non-discussion if we are com comparing apples and oranges. But we play in a Dutch league and he does well in the Dutch league, so we should protect that kind of level uh, from Tadic. But I do believe we should start looking at a more suitable uh, replacement, also in the long run, but also for Europe, where there's the, the, the tempo is higher, the level is higher. So, but it's going to be difficult to do. Uh, maybe we should groom someone in his quote unquote shadow. Uh, I'm, I all I'm, all, I'm all for that. I'm all for grooming somebody, getting someone in who can be his replacement. Maybe yeah. like 50%, like 60 minutes for Tadic in the beginning, then 30 minutes for this guy. I'm all yeah. for that. But just do not say already like bench him yeah. and we need a totally fresh face. We're not face. saying not that, but we're saying that the level is dropped with, with Tadic. And we're also saying that we're looking at the stats of Tadic, but we're not looking at how many shots, how many uh, crosses, how many... Passes did he try to get those assists? Those but ratios. I'm, I'm, I'm really agreeing with you. Really I'm agreeing with you on the eye test. I'm agreeing with you on the eye test, but the stats speak in his favor. Of course, he, he, of he, 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 you cannot disagree with that. And as long as nobody's there that can put off those True. stats, you cannot judge so easily on him. Uh, okay, let me I put something out there. The whole, yeah. 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 Go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead. So. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go I on. just wanted to <laughs> say, how many yeah. free kicks did Tadic take? How many penalties did Tadic take? I mean, these are these are also his things that he took the entire season. It doesn't yeah, but, matter if he takes one, 100 one, shots, as long as his stats it. are like this. One one can say a lot, but if he has the stat that he creates the most chances of all competitions in Europe, then you no, can say something. Not. Then you can say something about his teammates also. If they would a little bit be a little bit more sharp in front oh, of the of goal, he would have 30 assists. But that's not a comparison. I, I Do think you know? Tadic, Sorry. No, no, no. I think Tadic should benefit a lot from a target man, for instance. He doesn't have. He can cross the ball a lot. He doesn't need to get in the box a lot. That would. Yeah, I blame, I blame, I blame the coaches also. I blame the coach also. They have been shuffling the team since the beginning, especially Schroeder. Then Kudus as a, a, a striker. Then Broby again. Then Tadis gets uh, gets uh, put as a striker in the last game, the last 45 minutes, and Broby is out again. Tadis mm. played on the right wing in the beginning. Tadis has been a ten. Just play him on his primary position. If if Bergwijn isn't better. He just has to prove it, just like anybody right. else. All right, guys, I think we, we've come to the end of the stream because we can continue to talk about a lot of things. We're getting mm. so many questions also and, uh, and suggestions, and we really appreciate it. Um, just quickly, Sahbi is saying something that also Mark touched upon, which is a good point. The problem is we don't know whether Taj would accept being benched more often. He's a proud person um, and always wants to play, so the new coach will have a difficult choice to make. That's a valid point. That's really a valid point, so that's a good point. And uh, just on Roy, Roy has been uh, uh, telling me set up a stream with me and Pierre Juan, Pierre from uh, Twitter. So Pierre is somebody that always has amazing posts and threads on players to look out for or coaches. Really nice Twitter account. If you guys are on Twitter, check them out. Um, it's time to start to talk about how to build a new squad. That will be an interesting stream, to be honest. Um, I'll think about it, Roy. I'll think about it. Just promise, just promise me you will be positive. If you be positive on the channel, maybe I'll do it. Um, yeah, I think that's it, guys. Thank you so much for joining the stream, guys. Really, thank you so much for voicing your opinion. We'll be back next week. We will continue doing the streams, although it's off-season. That's what we do. Um, and look out for part three of the Sven Mislen talk. We already published two episodes. One when he was at Dortmund, one when he was at Arsenal. And the third one will be when he was director of football at Stuttgart. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the channel. I hope you guys enjoyed the stream. And please, guys, give us a like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, guys.